All right, here's the fifth video out of six for my trig function graphing series. Uh, and this is the secant function. This is our second reciprocal function we're looking at. The last one was the cosecant video. The secant is defined as one divided by cosine. So what we're gonna be doing on this graph is basically finding the cosine value and then just reciprocating it. So as we get started here, I'm going to be looking for a point that I know for a fact is really simple to start with. And I always think about the distinction between sine and cosine as the, the main difference is kind of where they start. In other words, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. All right, so I'm not really concerned about the sine right now, because I just did that one with sine and cosecant, but the cosine of 0 is 1 which means the secant SEC of zero is one over that. One over one is just one. So the, so the secant of zero is one as well. So I'll put that point right here. And from there, I need to just begin to think about like where are my asymptotes gonna be? Uh, what are some other key points? And for that, I'm gonna go down to my reference angle chart and my unit circle. So let's see, I'm looking at secant. So these are all these values down here. And I'm gonna compare them to all my cosine values right here. So let's see, let's go to, we already talked about zero. If I look at the, uh, uh, I'm gonna skip over pi over six right now. All right, and I'll go right to pi over four. So if I look at the cosine of pi over four, right, that's radical two over two. The secant of pi over four, is one over that. Well, you just flip that over. Two over radical two, rationalize. And I get two radical two over two, or just radical two. That's where we get this value from. Let's do, now let's go back to pi over six and do that one. So the cosine of pi over six, the cosine of pi over six, all right, and these came from our little special right triangles, is radical three over two. Well, the secant of pi over six is one over that. Well, you just flip it over, two over radical three. So we rationalize, you can't have radicals in the denominator, so two root three over three. That's where we're getting this value from. Another important value would be pi over three. Right, you see the secant of pi over 3 is 2 because the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 over 2. You just flip them over. All right, and then we get to the fact that the cosine of the cosine of pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, right? Pi over 2 is up here. That point is 0, comma 1. Cosine is the x value. It's the x value. And the secant of pi over 2 is 1 over the cosine of pi over 2. Well, that's undefined. All right, so at pi over 2, the secant is undefined. And that's pretty important. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to write down at pi over 2, the secant is undefined. And undefined just means it has an asymptote. So you draw a dotted line there. OK, and. Let's see, let's keep going. Let's go back to uh, negative pi over two. Negative pi over two. So if we drew like a little mini unit circle, right, negative pi over two would be down here. Well, what's the cosine there? The cosine of negative pi over two down here would be the x value. So that's zero, all right? So the secant there is one over zero or undefined. Remember, this is 0, negative 1. The x value is what we're looking at. The x value is the cosine of this point right here. So in other words, at negative pi over 2, the secant does not exist either. So we draw a, another dotted line. This is an asymptote where the cosine is 0, the secant does not exist. I'll repeat that. Where the cosine of 0, the secant does not exist. All right, so let's keep going. Let's look at pi units, right? On our unit circle, right, this is pi units. It's negative one comma zero. So the cosine of pi is negative one. 
the secant of pi is negative 1 over 1. So that's negative 1. That's down here. So I'll put negative 1. This is 1. Uh, let's keep going. The next up in the line would be 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 would be right here. 3 pi over 2. On our unit circle, that's down here. All right, that's the coterminal angle with negative pi over 2. We already said that that was undefined, so this one's going to be undefined as well. Cosine is 0, secant is undefined. All right, so we have our asymptotes all set up. The next thing I want to look at is the pi over 4, pi over 4 value. So let's see, the cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. The secant of pi over 4 is that flipped over. Well, if you rationalize, you get radical 2, which is about roughly 1.4. So when x is pi over 4, y is about 1.4. Well, this would be 2, so this would be about 1.5. So 1.4 would be like right in here. And same deal, if you go negative pi over 4, radical 2. Down to right here, this would be 3 pi over 4, negative, this is negative 2. So this would be negative 1.4, about right there. So there's a nice symmetry going on here. So this thing is going to graph like this. It's going to look a lot like the cosecant. It's just kind of shifted a little bit. And the reason that there's a nice connection there is because there's a nice connection between sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are identical looking. They're only shifted a little bit. So there is your secant graph. And just as I did in the other video with cosecant, I like to make a connection between cosine and secant. So think about the cosine graph again. The cosine graph started at 0, 1 and it went down through this point and then it went down to this point and then it started to come back up right, and then it kind of repeated itself and it went over to here. So it went down through this point and so on. So that's the cosine graph. All right, I don't want to look at the whole thing necessarily. I just want to look at just that cycle of it. All right. Notice how it's a direct sort of reflection of the secant. In other words, wherever the cosine is 1, the secant is 1. Wherever the cosine is negative 1, the secant is negative 1. If the cosine goes down this way, the secant goes up this way. It reflects. Cosine goes down this way, the secant goes up this way. They reflect off of each other. Cosine goes up, cosecant goes down. Cosine goes up, cosecant goes down. And most importantly, wherever the cosine is 0, the cosecant has an asymptote. So the cosine's in red. Wherever that touches the x-axis, it's 0. The cosecant has an asymptote. All right, because, of course, when cosine is 0, secant is 1 over 0. You can't divide by 0, so it's an asymptote. So it's kind of an interesting connection there between cosine and its reciprocal function. Um, this would go on forever, of course. You know, we, we keep saying that, but this would go like this, and then like this. And then like this forever and ever. All right, the next one over here would be like this. And then over here would be like this. All right, and the cosine would just keep bouncing back and forth from that. That would be touching every point like that. All right, it touches here, 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 here. All right, so a little better look at that would be right here. Now you can see the secant is in black and the cosine is in gray. It's a really nice connection between the two. So let's fill out some of this information over here in terms of its period. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. In terms of its period, I only want to be looking at one cycle of this thing for a second just so it's a little easier to analyze. Its period is 2 pi. 
uh, just like the cosine was, right? It repeats itself every two pi units. The distance between here and here is two pi units. Amplitude, well, there isn't really any amplitude because it goes on forever in the up and down direction. The domain is all real numbers except where there's an asymptote. So x cannot be pi over 2, which is the first one. And then you just add pi times some number, some integer n. All right, the distance between here and here is pi. It is pi, yeah. And here and here is pi. All right, so the asymptotes occur, and the domain is broken every pi units after that pi over 2. The range goes from negative infinity to negative 1 inclusive, and then skips over skips all this stuff in here, the range is the up and down, and goes from one to infinity. X-intercepts, there aren't any. Maximum, you would say that it's pi comma one. It's this value, it's the relative max. Minimum, zero comma one, it's up here. It's relatively minimum compared to the points immediately around it. Asymptotes, we have X equals negative pi over two, X equals pi over two, and X equals three pi over two. And we'll get back to these transformations when we get to the next couple videos here. I need to do cotangent first, and then I'll come back and I'll do a bunch of uh, videos on transformations, how we transform these functions, and how the amplitude uh, gets you know affected when we change the number in front. You know, if we say like two secant x, then all of a sudden the graph is going to kind of get bumped up to there. If I change it to one half secant x, the graph is going to get kind of squeezed down to here. Right, and we can vertically translate this thing. We can change the period, the phase shift, and all sorts of cool stuff. We can reflect them. So we'll get up to all that in the next couple of videos, but uh, that wraps it up for secant function. Next up will be 1 over tangent, which is cotangent. Thanks.